At Florida's Kennedy Space Center, there is a corridor, subtly lit in blue, that elegantly displays artifacts of the fallen space pioneers of the Challenger and Columbia shuttles. As visitors enter the forever remembered area, they become solemn and reverent, instinctively knowing that they are someplace special. A quote from President Ronald Reagan is prominently displayed as a reminder of the heroic bravery that all astronauts possess. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. Suddenly, unexpectedly displayed before them, is one of the only remnants of the Space Shuttle Challenger available for public viewing. A section of the left side fuselage proudly displaying the American flag in all its glory. As emotions take over, for those who remember, no words are needed to express what a great tragedy the loss of flight STS-51L was for the families of the crew, for NASA, and for all of America. But the Challenger story doesn't end there. This is the story of Challenger. From tragedy to triumph. From the first launch of the shuttle Columbia in 1981 to the final landing of the shuttle Atlantis in 2011, NASA's 30-year space shuttle program made several advancements in space exploration. Built in Palmdale, California at Rockwell International, the fleet of five orbiters included Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavour, and Atlantis. Together, the shuttles flew over 135 missions functioning much like a cargo plane. They carried materials and astronauts to help build the International Space Station. In addition, the astronauts also conducted several research experiments, delivered and deployed satellites, and even retrieved, repaired, and redeployed broken satellites. The shuttle Challenger first launched on April 4, 1983, and achieved several firsts. Some of these groundbreaking achievements include the first spacewalk with jetpacks, the first to retrieve a satellite from orbit, repair it, and then redeploy it, the first to launch at night, the first to land at night, the first to carry a female astronaut, the first to carry an African-American astronaut, the first to carry two female astronauts, and the first to have an American woman do a spacewalk. In spite of all of the accomplishments made by the shuttle program, it was not without its setbacks. One of the most notable was the horrific devastation of Challenger. On January 28, 1986, the world was watching the 10th launch of Challenger. This mission, 51L, was special because Krista McAuliffe was being launched as part of the crew of seven to become the first teacher in space. Unfortunately, what was to become one of NASA's shining moments turned into a tragedy. As the world watched, all seven astronauts were lost in a horrific fireball, just 73 seconds after liftoff. In addition to Krista McAuliffe, the crew members on board were Michael J. Smith, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, Judith Resnick, and... Shuttle Commander Dick Scobie. Dr. June Scobie Rogers, the wife of Commander Dick Scobie, remembers that very tough day where she and the other family members of the crew watched the launch from a rooftop. Everyone who was alive at that time seems to remember um, about the accident and about a beloved school teacher being on board. Uh, my husband was the commander. Um, Dick Scobie, who uh, was excited about flying uh, again. He had been a test pilot, a pilot on 41C. Um, that was a very important solar max repair mission. And then he was selected to be the commander of what NASA calls 51L. Um, so the Challenger uh, was a tremendous tragedy to everyone. 
But then um, the next day, um, President Reagan came to Houston, where we were, and had uh, a memorial service. And as the families all sat together in the audience, he spoke um, to the grieving families and to NASA, who lost friends. And um, then he was seated along with Nancy, his wife, and uh, me and other family members. And at the time of the missing man formation, flying over the um, campus area of, of NASA's Johnson Space Center, um, we looked to the sky to see how one one of the airplanes flew out of the formation straight toward the heavens, symbolizing that crew that went on. And then the rest of the planes flew in formation, symbolizing that they would continue the mission. So I did, I did break into tears once again. And um, Nancy... Reagan took my hands and, and and gave me a handkerchief. And as I looked to the sky, I knew that NASA would continue that mission. But having been so close to the teacher, Krista, and having worked with her at length uh, on on her her mission and I, as a college professor, she had joined me in my classrooms uh, to talk to my students. Um, so I, I cried wondering who would continue the teacher in space mission. And I knew if NASA couldn't continue it, then I would. And that's when, at that moment, is when I knew that somehow that mission would continue. And continue it she did. Although there are multiple monuments to honor the Challenger 7, Dr. Rogers and the other family members of the crew knew that they wanted something different. A living monument that could carry on the education mission that was so important to their loved ones. So weeks later, when I was able to gain my voice, I talked to a number of people asking asking for advice and I spoke with all the family members and to a person we agreed that that's what we wanted to do not just a memorial that um, would stand in a park somewhere uh, but but a living tribute to that beloved crew and so the families joined with me and we formed a nonprofit organization called Challenger Center. According to Dr. Rogers, many people thought that this couldn't be done. But she and the other family members had many people support them, including the vice president at the time, George Bush. Another supporter was Bob McCall, who sketched the first concepts of the Challenger Learning Centers. From this concept art, the members of the organization developed a learning center design where students could experience simulated missions in space. Over three decades later, 42 Challenger Learning Centers located around the world are engaging students in hands-on STEAM learning opportunities. But what is the difference in Challenger Center and a Challenger Learning Center? Dr. Lance Bush, President and CEO of Challenger Center, explains. The name Challenger Center is used to refer to the entire organization, very specifically the headquarters building, where the national office is and where we develop programming. All the other locations, which are where the students are getting to run the missions, those are Challenger Learning Centers because that's where the learning happens with the students. In the Appalachian Hills of Hazard, Kentucky, lies one of these uniquely exciting, fascinating, and engaging facilities. One of the first rural centers, the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky, has been thriving for over 21 years. Tom Cravens, the center director, has been at the helm since its establishment in 1999. 
He describes the extent of the impact that the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky has had in the region over the past 21 years. It's had such a huge impact on, you know, so many students only at the Challenger Center. You know, we're talking uh, the Challenger Center in Hazard. We're talking over well over 150,000 students uh, in that 21 years. Well, I think the Challenger disaster was just, like everyone agrees, a complete tragedy. You know, Krista McAuliffe and her lessons in space was going to be such an impactful event in our education system. And I think to lose that would be just awful. So I'm very pleased that Challenger is continuing to go as strong as it is so that we can continue providing those opportunities to students to give that real out-of-this-world engaging learning experience. So how is the mission of the Challenger 7 carried out at all these centers? What exactly should students and teachers expect when they visit a Challenger Learning Center like the one in Hazard? Flagship program is our space mission simulations, which is, um, you know, we have a mock-up of mission control in Houston, a mock-up of a space station laboratory, and then groups of students have to play the roles of astronauts and mission control specialists, uh, engineers, um, and so forth to uh, fly this simulated mission. Joseph Collins explained that there is always something exciting and new going on at the center. He refers to a visit there as an out-of-this-world experience. The latest in science, technology, engineering, and of course everyone's favorite, mathematics. For those who have never had the opportunity to visit a Challenger Learning Center, what actually happens inside the intriguing architecture of these buildings can seem a mystery. But we are a STEM learning center, so that means not just space science. We do a lot of science, technology, engineering, and math. So students can come to the Challenger Learning Center and be part of programs, everything from rocketry, ACT preparation, we've done first aid and survival classes, so we are involved in just any aspect of learning that you can think of, providing those hands-on retention-based experiences in all sorts of different disciplines, not just space science. The Challenger Center is an asset to Eastern Kentucky because we provide an experience that no one else does in our area. There are numerous testaments of students who have been inspired by their visits to a Challenger Learning Center. If you ask anyone who has had the opportunity to experience the living tribute of a Challenger Learning Center, they will likely tell you that it is a day they will always remember. A day that perhaps was inspirational and possibly even life-changing. Jody Connell, a freshman studying space systems engineering and astrophysics at Moorhead State University, said that attending programs at the Challenger Learning Center when he was young helped him know that he wanted to become an engineer. But it was a combination of the simulated mission trip with his classmates and attending Destination Space Satellite Week Space Camp in Asheville, North Carolina, an opportunity made possible by the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky, that helped him decide to become an astronautical engineer. As Jody finished high school, he became an inaugural member of the elite leadership group the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky's STEAM team. While attending college, Jody is thrilled with his job as a planetarium operator at Moorhead State University's Star Theater, and with his roommate, a friend he met during a Challenger Learning Center engineering summer camp when they were still in grade school. Jody's story is just one of thousands of success stories attributed to Challenger Center over the past 35 years. But what's on the horizon for this inspirational organization? What's next for Challenger Center and the Challenger Learning Centers? The year 2021 will be the 35th anniversary of Challenger Center. When asked what's in store for the next 30 years and beyond, Dr. Bush was optimistic in saying that the Challenger Center will evolve and it will adapt. Education is changing. You're starting to see more digital approaches come online and also other technologies, whether it's 3D printing, there's artificial intelligence on the horizon. One thing is for certain, Challenger Center was born out of a space community, and the space community is an innovative group. 
Many visit the monuments to the crew of Challenger Flight 51L, which can be found in Antelope Valley, California, and at Arlington National Cemetery. However, thanks to the efforts of Dr. June Scobie Rogers and those who supported her idea, 34 years after the terrible Challenger tragedy, the education mission that was so important to the crew is going strong. The children who visit the Challenger Learning Centers today have no recollection of that fateful day in 1986, but easily seen on their shining faces during a visit to a Challenger Learning Center is the light that stands as witness that the Challenger tragedy has no doubt brought a great triumph in Challenger Center. Coming up on the five minute point, this is a major milestone where we go for auxiliary power unit start. T minus five minutes. The morning air was cold on a January day. The blue sky watched in silence as the starship sailed away. Seven songs were playing, and seven hearts were won. And mystery put on its mask as seven songs were seven, sung. Six, we have made it to the start. Starship the fly on, sail the way. One, and lift off. On the way, lift off. It's in our minds, fly away. It's cleared the tower. To a world of hope and peace, where war and hunger Seas. Starship fly on, sail the way. Oh, blue sky, will you tell us any secrets you can share? Will you help us find the answer for all the brave who dare? Let the ocean be a pillow in all its unknown deep, or seven songs still ringing. And seven souls that sleep. Starship fly on, sail the way. Is it beginning to drop the way? Destination, let seven voices sing. Send back the word and tell us of joy that peace can bring. Oh, Captain, will you guide us till all the wars are gone? And, Teacher, will you teach us exactly how it's done? Starship fly on. Starship fly on, 